Welcome to my podcast, Shaping Your Journey. My name is Aldo Matza, percussionist, drummer, and artistic director of Cosa Music, inviting you to join in on conversations with friends, artists, professionals, and experts in the music world. Today, I have a very dear friend uh, who actually has the same background in, in, in her joy of, of drumming, but Southern Italian drumming. So this speaks a little bit closer to me. So And, and we have a little bit of history together. But uh, Alessandra, thank you so much for, for joining us. This is, this is great. And Welcome. It's, before, I'm so happy to be here with you. Before, before, I, I, before we talk about the journey, tell us a little bit about your, your own background from, uh, for people who, who may not know your, your back back history and then we can have the conversation on the on the journey <laughs> well you know i'm italian i'm born in rome i'm not from calabria even though i feel calabria your land is also my land because that's the place where i grew the most uh on many levels artistically also as a human being i'm from rome but uh, my grandpa grandfather from the south of rome played the tambourine and the italian folk music so that part of this um of the tradition is in my DNA, is in my roots. I didn't learn from him directly, but so my story is a little unusual in a sense that I wanted to be an artist, especially a singer, and my father didn't let me do it in Rome, so I moved to New York in the 70s to, you know, to study acting and music and different things and in theater. I also worked in films, you know, I worked with Federico Fellini in Italy, which is a big deal. Um, I was very young and uh, everything seems to happen so easy, so fast, you know. But then uh, in the late 70s, I heard this music being played back in Naples and other parts of Italy, the Southern Italian folk music and especially the large tambourines. And it really hit my heart, you know, that was one of those things that it was instant, like falling in love with the music, with the power of the music. And that instrument, you know, and I, I watched, the first person I saw play is considered the best player of all, Alfio Antico from Sicily. You know he is probably. I know and, the name, I've never. Yeah, he's, you know, yeah. he's the Glenn Velez of Italian tambourines. <laughs> Complete different kind of person, but in a sense that he has developed that technique with the huge drums at a whole other dimension in that one. So I, he was the first one I watched and that really touched me very deeply. And I decided I wanted to do that. I don't know why that instrument touched me that much, but it was like that is. And I was studying acting, you know, pantomime and singing and theater. And then I went tambourine, <laughs> it's like, but nice. as a singer too. But and then my friend, you know, John La Barbera, um, the guitarist, then he had just come back from a tour from Italy with a group from Puglia called Puglia Fresedde. And we both lived in New York and decided, let's do this. Let's try to play this music here that no one knew. You know very well that this tradition here is quite unknown, right? It's not yes. popular like it should be. And then we decided to start going to the south of Italy every summer to do the research, to learn from the old people and the real people of the, uh, you know, different locations, different styles. And that's what I always stress, like, like if you really want to learn any kind of ethnic percussion, you have to go to the source. You got to go to the masters in the source, like, you know, like you do with Cuba or anywhere. Otherwise, you're going to learn from somebody who's an imitation, you know, but and but I became known as the source, too, because I spent 42 years now doing this. So it's a long time. <laughs> in the beginning, I was a little bit of an outsider in these places. Now I'm not. So that's a, I passed a lot of tests. And the place where I learned the most is the region of Calabria. Calabria became the, the, nice. the spot where we all met and did incredible music. Right. And, and I guess, I mean, the, I mean, what you and I both feel the same way, uh, not a lot of people know this music. I mean, for, for good reasons, because there isn't a lot of popular music here and, and the groups, uh, the ethnic groups, I mean, tend to stay in their corners and be treated as traditional music, and it's there in the corner. Yeah. Although, although there is a lot of uh, um, experimentation. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and and more and more, I play the tamborello, but playing it with the drum sets. So that's great. You know, and so that I bring it into a, a different context, 
Right. And, uh, and people are saying, oh, I didn't know. Well, and I also did, uh, this is funny because once in the La Fiesta del Tambor, the Havana Rhythm and Dance Festival, oh, wow. where I normally perform, uh, and I always do it on purpose not to play what they play because, I mean, all these great Cuban percussionists and drummers, I say, there's no point in me doing something that they do. I should add something a little bit different. So I always uh-huh. do. I throw in djembes with drums, with congas, and and I've been doing that for over 20 years. And one wow. time, I decided to do the drum set with a, uh, with a tamborello, yes. but doing a ja- yes, but doing a jazz tune with a trio. So <gasps> it was footprints, you know, and wow. you know I'm seeing people going, what? And I say, why not? Listen to Footprints, what Tony Williams is doing with Miles Davis. Uh-huh. He doesn't do anything that you had expected. You know, so why not take these elements and do something really different? Yeah. You know, it's an aesthetic that changes. Um, I mean, if, if sometimes it may not work. But no, when but it does work... I think it makes a lot of sense. A lot yeah. of people in the South of Italy are doing that. They play drum set with Tamburello. Yeah. And I've been Especially doing in Calabria. My... It's a real Calabrese thing. Yeah. And it's funny because I've been doing that for over 20 years, my ca- combinations of things. And, you know, I've been adding instruments just because I said, if I don't, I can't practice 20 hours a day playing everything that I play. So I just mix it all in one in one place. <laughs> that was right, the beginning right, of right. <laughs> So let me do it all at once. Save some time. <laughs> You know? That's fantastic. And then I started, and then I started adding the the tamborello, which is you know it's great, and and I'm really happy. Uh, thinking back, when you first started introducing this, uh, I remember uh, you came up. I invited you to Montreal in the in the very right, beginning. That was the beginning of my coming out to the world. Yeah. Yes, and I said, well, everybody has to hear what Alessandra is doing. I mean, I can introduce it some, but let's have somebody who's been spending so much time and getting that technique <laughs> and the history, um, you know, in a, in a real presence. And, and a lot of people were pleasantly surprised and they really thanked me for, for doing that. And I mean, of course. That was nice. Yeah. That was back then, in uh, 96 or something. Well, you yes, know, exactly. Like that. Yeah. You're good. You have a good memory. <laughs> and... and you well, remember... I, I remember it because it was one of the first trips, you know, because of Remo, uh, uh, knowing you, you know, meeting you at pa- I think we met at Pazic, correct? That's yeah. right. That's right. Yes, yes. And uh, those were great years. That's what we were saying. Remember all those Pazics where we were all jamming and learning from each other and sharing so much? Oh, my God. Yes. And you were developing all these different uh, drums and, and, and yeah. teaching everybody how to play and, and you know. All of us who were interested in it talked more about it. So the more of us that developed, the more presence there was. So it, it didn't fall on a blind eyes or deaf ears, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as they say. The, it, you remember, I, 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 now I had another vision that you, you came out and we, when you came out to COSA, yeah, yeah. you played with uh, Repercussion when, when, yeah. When, yeah. when the group was there and you also played with us. That was beautiful. We, yeah, that was nice. And you did the arrangements of different tarantellas. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And then you also came to Montreal and played in a festival that we were playing in. And I yeah. invited you to join yeah. us in that particular one. And you Those know, arrangements were beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. We did a lot. And there's still, I mean, there's so much more to do. So you're, <laughs> you're the queen. Oh, and, well, I don't know about that now, but things seem so different, as we were saying. Um but those things are real, so I, we have to remember those things are real, are with us always. Yeah. It's just that it seems like it, it's another, yeah, it's another world. But I, I, didn't, I just had a nice experience, not like with you, but in Fridonia, I went to play with Kate Stonefield, and she had her students do marimba's arrangements of some of my, of my songs, and it turned out really beautiful. Nice, nice. So and that was like a... one of the few live shows I've done in two years. Yeah. I mean, this whole period has been a little strange, but, you know, I think I think everybody's gotten used to the idea that whatever we've done is is like the the history that pushes it forward to take turn it to the next uh, generation or the next phase. Right. The legacy. You know? That's very important. Yeah. That's what I'm facing right now. How you and, and the that, legacy and, and 
and bring it to the next generation. Yep, yeah, and I think there's yeah. a there is a, a real interest in this, but I think people like you have to continue because as people are looking up, you know, because you know the history, you have the background, you know the techniques yeah. where things certain things come from, and. I mean, when you when you do these workshops, for example, this whole Black Madonna thing, how did that come about uh -huh. where the Black Madonna came into the picture for you? Well, first of all, do you know, do you have this book? It's my new, it's not that new now. It's almost three years. Oh, I have, no, I have not. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I should uh, get it. Yes. The publisher to send it, it's called Healing Journeys with the Black Madonna by published within Inner Traditions, which is a very important publisher. And it's my life's work, really. It's 435 pages with lots of photos, a lot about Calabria, a lot of, nice. uh, I think three chapters about Calabria, to, to be honest. And um, so th this is where, where I really decided at some point, like we're saying, what do I do next as I get older? I really felt the, the urge to make it into a book. And the Black Madonna has yeah. been guiding me all these years. And it came about first time in Calabria. I was there in 1980 for the first time doing research. And I kept seeing all these Black Madonna statues or paintings, you know, in Tropea and that region. And, and I kept wondering why she was black, even though we had them in Rome, I wasn't aware of that. But, um, and when I realized that the answer of the priest was not the right one, no, saying it's the candle smoke, and I thought, no, no, this is, can't be the truth. <laughs> so um, I decided to really take it in, you know, an interest in research. And, and then the other intriguing thing was why they play music for her. You know, they do the drumming rituals for her. They do the snare drum, the frame drum. People dance, ecstatic dances for six, seven hours. It was obviously pre-Christian, you know, and the south of Italy it was called Magna Grecia, as you know, Great Greece. So it was obviously that the beauty of the south of Italy is that they never lost the tradition of what's pre-Christian and ancient and keeping the, not only that tradition alive, but keeping the music with it. It's like, you know, Africa, in Africa, their ceremonies have music. The south of Italy is very similar, you know, and... And that's what got me, like, not only why is Madonna black, and I'll tell you a few things about that, but, and they're playing music for her and drumming and dancing. That's, that's not Catholic, you know? That's not what they taught us in Rome when you go to church. And then I realized through researching the books and in places that the black Madonna represents many things, you know, the earth mother goddess that existed before, you know, Christianity, the darkness of the womb of the mother. So many goddesses of the earth, of the moon, were worshipped in many places, Calabria, Sicily, all over the south, are now black madonnas. But so the Christianity just adapted that tradition. Because she also represents the mother of Christ. But the, the, ma the main goddesses are Cibele from, from Turkey, Anatolia, um, the legend is a black meteorite that fell from the stars and was carved into the statue of the goddess, for which they played the frame drums and tambourines in uh, Napoli, you know, in Campania. Then Isis from Egypt, so the connection to Africa is very important. The goddess of the moon, Diana Ephesina, and then other Aphrodites, uh, the goddess of the sea. So a lot of stuff is similar to Yoruba from Africa. Interesting. Believe yeah, it or yeah. not, but there is a connection. No, no, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you I, believe oh, it. I know you. Do. <laughs> no, of course, I and I and I see it on a on a regular basis. In fact, uh, I I did an experiment in a, in a concert at Cosa, where oh, I yeah? invited a a rumba group with bata drums uh, playing their traditional. It's in it's in three, of course, a twelve eight. A twelve eight. And, uh, and then we rehearsed. I played the tamborello, Southern Italian, That's and chanting. I mean, my chanting is very bad, not as good as yours, but chanting because I was hearing the same kind of chants that they were doing while they're playing with the Absolutely. same nasal, I, nasal pitches. I've been to ceremonies. It's so similar. 
So at one point so I said, "So glad you did that. That's fantastic." Oh yes, and, and and I said, "So let's do this at the same time. Let's superimpose it." And we did. Wow. Oh yeah, and it totally works. Totally works. I I mean, not the chanting, of course. I mean, they would chant, and, and then I would chant, chant. Yeah. and then we would play together. And and musically, it really works. It's it's a it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I you know I, in New York, of course, I used to go to some of the some these uh, ceremonies here, at Central Park. I have some friends who are initiated. And every time I hear that taka ta taka ta taka, when they start that, it's like, man, it's almost the same. And the style of chanting is the same, especially in, in the, some of the mountain region from the south of Italy. With right. the high pitch voice, you know, the harmonies. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, our roots are from Africa, so it's it's clear. And then, you know, when you go to Calabria, especially to the festival of Madonna dei Poveri, you can see them. Here is, I don't know if you can see some from here, but there are some black Madonnas. Lift it up, lift it up a little bit, lift it. Okay. This is La Madonna yeah. dei Poveri, right? And they have the drumming tradition for her with the snare drum. Let's see if I find the photo here, but... Uh, and it's totally African. And they have a giant puppet that represents the African king that falls in love with the Italian queen. So you see them embrace in, um, in this um, dance they do. It's maybe not so clear here, but I, I'll try to show it. Yeah. You see? Yep, yep. And then they do have a flag dance that it's very, very phallic, very erotic. So all of these rituals, especially in Calabria, are so ancient. No one can really pin down, like, when did they start doing it? But you can see the connection. It's definitely for the Earth. We honor the Earth Mother at certain times of the year, you know, in August. And then re remembering the African roots. It's so right on your face, you know. And in this time, with all these problems we're having in the world, I've been, you know, really talking about it in the book. It came out even before the pandemic. I really want to make sure people understand that too, that this Black Madonna tradition was also popular in the Middle Ages during the time of the plague. Wow. And people processed with her statue, uh, to stop the plague, to stop the fear of death, and they danced in circles with the drummers, snare drums and tambourines. Interesting. Wow. I, I wanted to ask you about this Black Madonna. I was in um, one of my trips, because I, I, you know, I would go to Italy often, but once I was in Sicily, and I remember you had been speaking about this Black Madonna in this little town where there's the, the, the church. Where is that? Tindari. Yes, I went there. Oh, to see this you went plant. there. So beautiful. Yes, in the, on the mountain, like on the mountain over up. the sea. Yes, yes, what yes. A I, place. What a so place. I said, I have to see this for myself. <laughs> so I and did. Was it an incredible experience? Beautiful, beautiful. But, but was that originally more in Sicily or Calabria or both? It's the same. I mean, it's the same tradition all over. That's a wow. Sicilian Madonna, and it's probably the most ancient we know to today. They said she may be from the year 300, imagine. Uh, she looks very much like an African totem. You know, the statue says, Nigra sum set for Mosa, I am black and beautiful in Latin. And uh, it came from the sea. So that one is a clear one that say probably came from Africa. The one that I, worship, that I go to in Calabria, was found under the earth and is more connect, connected to the earth. Madonna del Tinder is more connected to the sea. And uh, and if you see under, you know, that the water and the lakes that they, there is a sea under, right? And that's where she came from. And there are those lakes that change shape all the time and they're salt water lakes. And they always have the, if you look from above, I don't know if you notice, but if you look, it's there. Yeah. It's a, usually a profile of a woman. You see that. Really? Hmm. I'll have and to pay attention. attention. And there are photos of that everywhere. So that, that, that Madonna, I went to the feast there too. They don't have the folk music for her anymore. That, that is lost. They just, you know, do the music procession and some songs, but not the actual, like, like they do in Calabria or Campania or Puglia. Right. 
but the, it's still a very powerful, super, super healing place to begin with. And they have the, uh, I mean, the nice thing is that there are some companies that have, we, we said earlier about people mixing uh, the new new approaches to playing tamborello or any of the, right. the styles. One thing I noticed recently uh, uh, is this Notte della Taranta. La Notte della Taranta. I have been watching it now on YouTube because I was curious. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Work it's huge. Yes. Have you been there or you just watched I have, it? I have not, but I, I am so curious. I'm going to go this year for sure. Really? <laughs> to, oh, are? yes. I'm definitely going to go. And, and I have to see this because these are huge productions. The, uh, that that the, is one of the biggest productions in Europe. Wow. It's a huge production. I mean, you have like 20 people playing, singing. An orchestra orchestrations, of orchestras. and uh, violin. Yeah. It's yeah. an incredible production. The, from what I've been watching, because I, I never went there live because I was always doing my workshop in Tuscany at that time. But um, I don't really like what they're doing now. It's a little too much pop with it. And the pop they're doing is not good pop. <laughs> So it's a, it's but the a fact hybrid. that they're that that they're bringing in the instrument and 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 so it's it's really present because and they and these people are really playing. Yeah, but they're uh, incredible players. Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, that's and you nice daily to when see. we see the power, everybody in unison with the tambourine. It's incredible. I, I've been watching it now on YouTube because I'm so tired to watch TV, and I decided, you know, maybe I should just watch what I like. You see, <laughs> sure. <laughs> it helps me grow or inspires me. You know. Uh, and I, I'm blown away, like, wow, they had like three, four hundred thousand people there. So so that it's in, in, it's an indication that this tradition and especially the tambourine playing now in Italy is popular. It's commercial and everybody knows about it. When I started, no one knew it. Yeah. Nobody yeah. cared. Yeah, Very no, no, it, it's, and it, it's important. No, it's important that you did that, and it's not, you know, like I said earlier, it was not work that's lost, and it, you know, the seeds will grow, and there are other people doing whatever they're doing, and they'll make sure, you know, yeah, uh, you know, people like myself or any other, anybody else that's involved, and it, it is my my tradition, although I didn't grow up with it. I mean, my my story is really funny because um, when my I was born in Italy. I, was, I only came when I was nine, but my father came three years before, so we Im immigrated later. Yeah. yeah. And we always used to party. You know, there's always traditions of, of celebration all the time. When we came here, it was it was a different story. I mean, we were we all everybody worked. We we took that su Sunday was the day of rest and visited, and but That's the rest of right. the time was like, I mean, I won't won't call it slavery, but. The that was lost, the joy was lost for, for the week, and that one day they would, you know, party and, and celebrate, and it was fantastic. But the funny, the funny thing in my case was, I was working on an album with my brother. I don't know if you remember this. I my brother was a, a writer, a poet, and at one point he was he's a performer, and I said, "What? Why don't we put music to your writing?" Because he was performing it. Ah, right. And we would, and so we, I did an album, and in it, the, it was all about the loss of cultural memory, you know, the ah, displacement. Wow. It was all about the displacement from the village to the metropolis and the loss of cultural memory. Yes. And that really, that really spoke to me. And I said, you know, let, let's do this together. So we finally came together and worked on this project. Right in the middle of it, I had just been studying with Glenn Velez. I've been studying, you know, all kinds of people, everybody I could meet. I just wanted to learn. And I'm learning from different people, different things. And one day I was at home and I took my parents to a, a, a Saturday night, one of those Italian celebrations, came home and my, my father was a dancer, Tarantella ah. dancer, a really good one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, were, they used to win contests. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was fantastic. So, my father picks up, I had a drum at home, a frame drum at home, and he starts playing it and dancing. Like, like Alessandra, I had never seen my father play. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I mean, okay. So you imagine, I'm watching my father and I just stopped and I said, <laughs> Papa, 
where, like, where does this come from? I'm traveling all over the world. I'm doing all of this. <laughs> and you don't even mention it. Never mentioned it. Never mentioned it, Alessandra. So I thought that was, that was interesting. You know, that whole theme of the loss of cultural memory. And, and yeah. I said, why, why did you never mention it? Why you never why play it? Why do you it? play? Yeah. You, you're, watching, you're coming to my concerts when we come through town. And you see me doing what, what I'm doing. And you don't say, well, you know, I used to play drum myself. You, say, be <laughs> like, a, you think he was embarrassed? You thought a lot of Italians were embarrassed. No, it was not embarrassed. It was not important anymore. You put it aside. Wow. And, but it's hard to explain. I mean, wow. in that context, you have to say, well, it was not you anymore. You put it down, somebody else doing this, but it was not a thing. It was something you enjoyed doing. And they used to serenade, apparently, the girls from the balcony. One would play guitar and he would play tamborello. And these are stories that are coming out now at that point later on. I'm in my 30s by then, right? Yeah. And so I called, I called my brother and I said, do you know anything about this? And he said, ah, yes, I remember. We we go to Aspromonte on Sunday afternoons. Que bello, be, like you, the best the dance, place. The dancing, because Aspromonte was like 20 minutes from where we lived in, in the Wild. mountains. Yeah, and... So this is this, yes, I remember now you're bringing it back. So I said to my father, we're doing this album. You have to come and play. And we're going to do one piece in, in Calabrese. <laughs> uh, uh, and you're, you're going to play. So he came in and just did it in one take. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going to leave you my, my drum so you can practice. Uh, get Fantastic. yourself warmed up. He says, after 40 years, you think it's going to make a difference? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so it was always in him. I mean, amazing these, these, these things. You know, so how do you think I felt this tradition that was there? I had no idea. You know? And that's what motivated me to start doing it because it's such a, first of all, you know, it's a very difficult technique. So if you really want to play, you got to work very hard. Yes. But, and it's and, so and, powerful. I really think it has to do with the Italians also. Like you say, you know, they lost their con contact with their culture, but from what I hear, some of them felt embarrassed to keep it, to, to present this to, to an audience, to an American audience. Sure. So they really, was... and look at the version of, of the Tarantella that is Italian-American, has nothing to do with the real one, you know? Right. It's more do, you want to show, do you want to show, like, just briefly what... Uh, the kinds of things you've been working on and what it, what it looks like. This is well, what uh, really interesting. Is, you know, <laughs> I haven't been working on new things, uh, to be honest, um, because my book and my videos, on I did some, a series on the Black Madonna that is now available on, on Teachable as um, online classes. But, the, you know, the main technique that, that you know, uh, the 6 a very much on the Tarantella Bouillet, right? When, if you do the Tarantella Calabrese, it's more with the flat. Calabrese is very, using the slap a lot, and I use it in a specific uh, rhythm when I honor the Black Madonna from Calabria, Seminara, and um, with the medieval song. together with the snare it goes drum ta da 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 dum ta da da it's really yes. a snare drum technique and then it goes way, way faster
and it's very trancy. Yeah. This is the one they play in a procession, that rhythm. Okay, I, For I have a question. San Rocco. Nice. I have a question, Alessandra. Yes. Um, when I asked my father, because he had a different way of playing. Ah, um, did he play on the fingertips? There you go. That's it. So, this way? Like, I'm yes. Gonna Yes. Oh. Bellissimo. I've been practicing. I don't do it that way. You've been practicing. That's great. <laughs> I don't do it. Like... But I don't do it like you're doing. But I was... The reason... You had the triple. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, he showed me. That's the way he played. And then that's a great technique. I mean, what you had shown me, where yeah, you, yeah. your one is here instead yeah. of here. So yes. Yeah. You're playing really well. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I'm trying to catch you up to it, you. <laughs> I remember in the beginning you were going, "Oh my God, it really, it's so tiring." Yes, in the well, beginning, it, 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 once, but that once you understand how flexible this is, it's not tiring at all. Yeah, well, it it takes a lot of stamina for sure. A lot of stamina, true. Yes. So my my <laughs> question is this: uh, my my question is this, Alessandro, because for years uh, my father would play with the downbeat on on the fingertips. And others would play uh, on, the, on thumb. the thumb. Yeah. So, and I asked him, I said, what's the difference? He said, women would play one way and men would play the other. Is that the answer? It's true. Okay. So which is the... Me the well, the, the way I learned, this was the female way I played. The play, huh? Okay. Yeah. Many times that's what they say. In Campania, and this is the way that's the way when I first started. Ah, uh, this one on all I go this one on a dawn. Nice, that, that's the way he, um, people in a uh, like Rafael, a people I learned from would tell me. But then there is another way they play. The, I don't know if you ever seen a Giorgio Chiama La Roesh with the hand going this way. No, I haven't seen that one. Wow. Yeah, I, can't, I haven't practiced it that much. It's, it's really weird. It's like you start al contrario. Right, right. And that a lot of young people are playing that way. Really? But that... So you're... Start so you're here. Wow. Interesting, interesting. Molto strano. Yeah. <laughs> but what I like about the Calabrese style is the slap. You've seen people do that, right? Yes. I learned yeah. a lot of that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm and I'm transferring that to, to the drum set, but playing tamborello at the same time. That's fantastic. Have, yeah. So I'm, I'm having fun with that. I'm. Why not? You know, it's like you don't have so 20 now, hours. Are you in doing a day. that uh, live yet, or you're going? You're teaching oh, yes. that online, oh, yeah. or? Well, online I'll be I'll be doing it more online too, but. So far, a lot of live, you know, and, and mixing it in different styles, like in a jazz context, you know, playing tunes with that yeah. and playing or playing traditional, you know, like with uh, uh, rumba players in Cuba and, you know, finding those commonalities. Because at the end of the day, there are seven notes and there are so many rhythms and often they'll work. If it's 12-8, chances it's are it'll work. 12-8, right? You know, and then that's the African. In, in a, totally in a, African. You know, totally. Uh, but then you also have the Irish, you have all of these yeah, other... Yeah, the jig has the same rhythm as the Tarantella. Dif yeah, different accents. Yeah, and, and, in, and in Quebec, you have uh, the same thing, which is tradi Quebec traditional music also has that same rhythm. Oh, really? But that also works. You think oh, because yes. of the French connection with the... Like music from Bretagne? 
I think so. You know, the old if music from Britain is Celtic a little bit, and they have that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know I mean, about Quebec. Wow. Yeah, there's, but I, there's a, I'm curious there's because a, I still want to come to Cuba. We do, do. Do they use the pandereta there like they use in um, Puerto Rico? Or they don't use it. No. no. Traditionally, no. I mean, now you're starting to like see... Like La Bomba Plena in Puerto Rico, they don't have that, no. No, they don't. What I'm seeing, which is really interesting in the past number of years, progressively, they're using a lot of these uh, frame drums and djembe in their playing and recordings. And they don't realize, but I've been doing that 20 years over there <laughs> in concerts. And I would do workshops... Because when they ask me to do something or show something or do a clinic on something, I'm obviously not going to show them how to play Cuban rhythms. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm course. learning from them. And so I say always, what can I bring to the table that might be interesting? So then, last month when I, was, when I was there, I was invited. Enrique Pla, the original drummer for Irakere, invited me for, uh, to, to see him at a recording session. And as they were recording, the percussionist had a djembe, had some other frame drums, and congas, and all of wow. these mixes. And so they are, they are also entering that world. Absolutely, absolutely. And That's uh, the way it is. You know, I, I don't know if you know in Italy, there is a very famous percussionist, Giovanni Imparato, you know him? Yes, I know, I know Giovanni. Yeah, yes. And he goes to Cuba all the time, and he brings the Napolitan Tamoriada there. Which is that other rhythm, right? The, for the black Madonna. This one. Beautiful. He brings that with his voice, which is really an unusual voice. He sings very, very high. And then he goes into the old, old the Santeria. All the yeah. Yoruba Orishas. Nice. The Bata. Beautiful. He's using Tamora and Bata and all kinds of stuff. Beautiful. That's what it's all about. I used I actually used that in a rock sense because there's your backbeat. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it works beautifully. Wow. It's in a yeah, rock band? Like, well, no, in a or in a rock context. Pop and rock pop context. You playing that? Absolutely. No, no, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll be doing some of that mixing how you use these instruments in a context of, of a drummer. Right. You know? Uh, That's a so great just idea. To, just to expand the palette a little bit more, you know? It, Very it's good interesting. idea. I mean, your hands are doing that, playing these different things. So I'm saying, well, why not at our feet? You know, different, <laughs> different rhythms, different uh, right. yeah, yeah. sounds. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, the, I mean, Ma Massimo Cusado that you know, he does all kinds of stuff like that to, you know, mix him. Yeah. But see, yeah. I think that to mix like that, you really have to have good taste and a lot of musical background. What I'm looking at, La Notte della Daranta, as an example, I don't see the last years, I don't see people doing the right thing. The, you know, with the drum set, with the guitars, they really take away the power of the raw material trying okay. to expand into something that it's neither folk or pop um, right because i don't think they have the musical background that it takes like you do to do research all over the world and in yeah and then understand and you know what if you want to look it up on the la notte della daranta i think 2016 they had glenn Velez and his wife laurie perform oh beautiful Beautiful. It was really? interesting to watch Glenn <laughs> in his, you know, doing his thing with a million people behind him. Nice. nice. And that's one person that I always want to thank, you know, that inspired me to take this to the next level. When I first met Glenn, he yeah. told me that what I was doing was very special and that I should really bring it to the world. He took lessons with me, was my first student. And then I introduced me to Remo and then Remo opened the doors to me. Uh, and there are very few people like Glenn. There are such masters oh, that there are. Incredible. And then so humble and say, ah, do this, do that, and go. And, you know, it's yeah. important for us to have men mentors and teachers. So he yeah. wasn't my teacher. To me, it was more of a mentor. And I never studied with him. But, but of course, I learned a lot from him. But yeah, no, you have no, the same was... experience, no, with Glenn for frame drums? 
Oh yes, and I I learned a lot from I I used to fly down to New York on a on a monthly basis and study with drum set players and Glenn and you know all these people. But Glenn was special because he was bringing in something I had never seen, right. and, and he was able to teach it you know in such a way that I could learn it. So I I learned a lot, and he was incredible. So that's why yeah. we had Glenn at Cosa almost every year, just because he yeah. was like the fountain of of this whole absolutely uh, channel. You know, and he and, opened and, the whole world to that. No one would have been doing frame drums now if it wasn't for Glenvilles. Yeah, and and it's funny because uh, I remember he did a, an album called Trio Globo. Yeah, there was one. I know was, that there was one track on there where there was you know the whole brush thing, and I hadn't yeah. seen him do that yet. So one one year that he came to Cosa, this is a very beginning, maybe twenty three years ago. He came and I, you know, remember my hybrid kit that I have. Uh-huh. Well, originally, I, I surprised him. I said, "I, Glenn, I figured out what you did on this one particular piece with the frame drum here. I'm playing, but like like this, you know, yeah. holding it, the frame drum, the tar. And I, I invented. I took a brush. I put it on a brush pedal. I think I'm the, I'm the first one who did uh-huh. brush pedal." On a small drum, a small drum, a 14-inch drum back then. This is like 23 years ago. So I started playing the thing, what he was doing in Trio Globo. And he looks at me, he says, Oh, that's very nice. But that's not what I did. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I really like what you did. This is great. You have a lot of imagination. What, how ingenious what you did. And then, and he says, all I did was... Put the drum here, and I have the brush in my left hand, and mm-hmm. the rest is my right hand. His right hand was you two of my hands. You reminded me. I used to do that stuff. Yeah, I should do that more often. Yeah. But it's, yeah, now but it's because a, I haven't played live that much, there are things that I'm like, oh, okay, I should go back to that. But I, but I mean, just to say that, I mean, what he was doing was it, mixing these things was incredible, but I had not seen it yet. I had only heard it, and I thought it was something else. So I said, I... I <laughs> I figured out how he was doing that, and it was I invented something else. See? Yeah, I remember I started working with the brush. Did you ever see that? And I had the brush here. I, you know, because I play, I just play the, like the Brazilian group. Right. And I was starting to do this thing that I put a brush here, you know. And I, I can't do it with the pen, but it was like, you know, the two, like right. it's a boom, but like, remember? I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. That. No, I remember. I remember you doing that. With a brush. <laughs> yeah. Be well, also I... with a pen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was funny because I put it on, a, I took out the, 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 drum, the bass drum beater and I put a, I invented, I invented a way to hold it up and the brush that was playing instead of a beater. And Beautiful. So I, oh no, now I, I, I took off with it and I have a, a, a trigger on that drum and I, you know, I did many other things with it. So Fantastic. you have the sound of the brush and the the sound of whatever sound bank you you're using, and I, I have fun with that. But it's Fantastic. interesting how someone can can inspire you right. in one way, and you take somewhere else. That's what I was doing also with the ocean drum. Remember, I've done all yeah. kinds of sounds with the ocean drum. Um, there it, it is, but um, because uh, you know the Italian tambourine is made with the strainers to plant seeds into the earth, right? So when I saw the ocean drum from Remo, I went, ah, that sounds like probably what women did when they were working in the fields and then chanting, and then they made a drum out of it. So I took the ocean drum onto another level. <laughs> nice, yeah. So, but I really Beautiful. feel that it's time for, it's great to speak with you because I feel I need more inspiration on new things and i thank you for that because i feel it's been a strange two years but i created this you know online video series so everything is online but i i need to to do something else now back to going to the you know perform live and then more yeah thank you for speaking with me today no thank you giving me no, more no, ideas of other things that we should always be evolved evolving yeah and and sometimes you know a, a mental break from the things we do is a good thing, right? You think so? so yeah, I, absolutely. In the beginning, it doesn't feel like it, it was all no, of a sudden. No, it feels shut like down. a little. 
Oh, yeah, it's like being sent to solitary confinement in prison, <laughs> right? Especially when you're used to being all over the planet on a daily basis. Unbelievable. <laughs> But and I think it was... And it's it was, hitting uh, me more now than before because I was so busy creating these online classes and events that I just kept going. And now it's hitting me that the world is kind of reopening. But wait, aren't we going back to what it was when you, like you said, not really... I don't think so. I don't think it's going back at all. It To me, I, I look at this like the Industrial Revolution on, on steroids. There it took 20 years. <laughs> Now it took two or three years for the whole thing to just suddenly shift completely. So what was all the good stuff will remain, all the stuff that wasn't really in, developed yet will not. And those of us who have the strength and the appetite, I think will just pivot to do something that we really wanted to do or we're ready for, I should say, because what, what we did, I think, is the foundation of what we're going to do next. So, Right. And, and that's and where natural. I'm at now, trying to create more of a school and a center. Um, we call it now the Black Madonna Center and the Italian Folkloric Studies. The only thing up there now on Teachable is a series of uh, videos that I shot through the years of the Feasts of the Black Madonna with the music. And then I took a break and I guess it's normal, you know, I started to feel really tired and I'm like, oh my God, this is a lot of work to create things online. It's so much work. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. But I it's, think, you know, you've done so much research and so much pushing mm -hmm. and getting it out there that I think now you, you should maintain that and make and put sure it out, and put it that out it's there, not right? lost. Right. Yeah, and, you agree and that which there should be like these courses to download whatever, whatever Sorry, you, Italian frame drum one two yeah yeah or or whatever you need to do to keep it alive yes so whatever whatever you've done it should it should have its place and and only you can tell where that should be because it's going to take your energy uh -huh. you know, we're, a lot the of rest energy. of us the rest of us can only do what we do and and watch and participate and support a lot of yeah. energy. Yeah, so uh, all that you've done is not lost, but now make sure it, it, it lives in, in a right place. Thank I, you. As far as Thank I'm you. concerned. You know. I should stay in touch with you about that because uh, maybe you, I don't know if you're interested in being involved because I'm, I'm going to create a program where others, you know, like lesson one, lesson two, and others play. Sure. So count on me. I'm... It's very good to have this conversation with you now about that. For as long as we're standing, I have to report to my board of directors. I already started some recording, but it's good to. I need to involve other people. Other people can play, and other people who are um, very good as well. Just can be anybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And know about well, music. So I'm glad we're having this conversation. And the other thing I see myself doing is running programs in Italy if people really want to still travel. And I have one in August in Campania where we just focus on the Tamoriata and visit some Black Madonnas. But I really need to do one in Calabria. I already know the places to go to. So I don't know if that's interest, an interest to you, but I think we should do that. Like you do a cube in Cuba, right? We should do it in Calabria and Sicily and places sure. like that. Well, I don't know. I, I'm going to tell you more later, but I'm going to be in a Calabria a little more often. Ah, <laughs> you read my mind. I want to want to leave there. So I'll be spending a little bit extra time. You got a I, place? You know, I think, You're going and at, I think, at a place? Yeah. Yes, I already have. Where? But, ah, I can't tell you. Okay. I'll, I'll write it to you, but um, you, you'll enjoy this. But I think what... Well, if, if what, it's a place where we can... I can bring students there. Sure. No, no, There, I think there's, there's much we can do. Because uh, I think now it's a time where we are more mobile, and I think mm -hmm. people will be um, open to exploring different things. I mean, sure. it's a, it's a different thought process. So yeah, I'm I'm still thinking right now. It's you know saying okay, what is that that thing that I would love to do right now? Me too. So let's Which say is for me to be in our land and bring people there. Eat, drink, and, and, and study, and learn. Yeah, That's yeah. my vision. Yep. And ha. you know the world. The world was this big. <laughs> now, it's now true. It's, you know, it's only a flight. You know now. Now, 
and we have the the knowledge, we have the courage, we have the interest, and and certainly we have enough friends around that will support. And, yeah, uh, no, and this is that. serious. I see. I launched the one in Campania, and I got sixteen people to sign up like this. You know, in this time, it's not bad. No, what's excellent. happening, right? That's excellent. That's with, a, excellent. with a teacher from there, Nando Citarella. But I really want to do one in Calabria, and and I'm kind of going crazy in my mind, like, oh God, we got to do that. Okay, do that. Take but it could be later. And... It could be September because it's warm there. It could be October, whenever. But if you don't mind, we can stay in touch, and I'll tell Absolutely. you. Absolutely. What I'm Absolutely. working on is creating this kind of uh, organization. So it's already in the process. And adding other people that want to ha have a similar vision. Yeah. No, no, and we'll get it. And anybody who's listening. I mean, you already can... do these things, and I've already been doing them in a different way, but. Yeah. And I, I'm sure there will be interested people listening and watching this Absolutely. down the road. Uh, how yeah. can people not want to come to do to drum and dance and eat and drink by the ocean in a place like that in Calabria? It's impossible. It's right. But you know, I before sign before signing off, I want to. Uh, of course, we can go on for days about this. Right, but, I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it in person. But at least we had. I had the opportunity to have this conversation with you and share it Thank with, you. Very with people who are listening. Me, I know. And uh, as I as I always say, to be continued. Yes.